Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to another of my end of season waffle videos. A quick reminder, these are not reviews. They are just a chance for me to give a few of my thoughts on how I think each team and driver got on in 2022. And today it is the turn of Alpine. Now, on the face of it, it was a very good year for the team as they beat McLaren to P4 in the standings, which is one better than they managed in 2021, so some very good progress. And they had a very quick car for much of the year as well and gave us some great racing. As I said in the McLaren video, I thoroughly enjoyed the season-long battle between Alpine and McLaren. Some great scraps in there. So it's largely good news for Alpine. They have a quick car and a good foundation to build on going forward. What they lack, however, is reliability, understatement of the year. In fact, seven of the eight retirements across their two drivers in 2022 were due to mechanical problems. Now, this shouldn't have come as too much of a surprise because back in February, Renault said they were willing to risk reliability problems with the new engine after deciding to push the limits of performance, which, by the way, fits into the F1 saying, it's easier to make a fast car reliable than it is to make a reliable car fast. And of course, as it turned out, they did have those reliability headaches, but fortunately for them, it didn't cost them that coveted fourth place in the championship as McLaren lacked a consistent point scoring second driver. Had Ricardo been on form, though, that could have been a very different story. It could have been very costly. Esteban Ocon has really impressed me this year. And although some won't like the way he drives, I've personally really enjoyed his aggressive driving style at times, his willingness to get stuck in and try and make some moves. Oh, absolutely. He has wandered over the line a few times, and that's something he needs to iron out, especially when coming up against his teammate. After all, there were some properly nervy moments for the Endstone gang. I'm thinking the aggressive defending in Jeddah, for example, and the scruffy scrap with Fernando in Brazil. Yes, he wants to beat his teammate. Of course he does. I get that. But in that midfield, a double DNF caused by teammates taking each other out could be costly. It didn't hurt them this year, but it could do next time. That's my point. His averages for the season are good with an average qualifying position of 10.2 and race finish of 8.2. There were, though, some pretty poor qualifying performances over the course of the season, got to be said with some Q1 exits. And his best result of the year came at Japan as not for the first time in 2022, he went wheel to wheel with Lewis Hamilton and managed to defend his fourth place brilliantly to pick up some big points. Points, by the way, that left him with a tally for the season of a career-best 92 for 8th in the standings, one place above Fernando Alonso. And yes, I know, I know, reliability problems and all of that, but come on, he still beat Fernando Alonso, and I remember people telling me he wouldn't be anywhere near him this season. So credit where credit is due. Great season overall for Esteban. And I think a great season for Alonso as well, at least on the driver's side anyway. He was severely let down by Alpine in 2022 and certainly suffered the most with those reliability problems I think I've mentioned about 30 times in this video already. But like I say, he consistently did his job and gave us some great action throughout the season and often extracted everything from that car to battle with some of those ahead in quicker machinery from time to time. I was looking through his results for a best result of the season. He did manage, by the way, three top five finishes, but then it dawned on me. Let's not forget that surprise front row started Nick during a wet qualifying session on a drying track in Canada. Loved that. Great lap. What about his stats for the year, though? Well, his averages are 8.3 for qualifying and 8 for the races, both better than his teammate, although must be said the race averages are super close. He also won the qualifying battle versus Ocon, but lost out to him in the race head-to-head. -head. He scored points at 14 races, and despite all those car issues, he still finished the season ninth in the standings and was just 11 points off Ocon. Fernando reckons mechanical failures cost him as many as 70 points in 2022, and whilst I'm not totally sure it was that many, because there are just too many ifs and buts involved to stick a hard number on that, there's no denying he certainly lost a lot of points though. And I'll say this as well, that's why I'm not at all surprised he's moved to Aston Martin. I was at the time, but when you look at how the season's gone, who can blame him really? As I said earlier, he gave his all to that team and was ultimately let down by that engine. I'd still say, though, a very good season for Alpine in terms of championship finish and really the pace that car showed for much of the season. They are in a great position to build from, and I'm quite excited about that team for the future. What absolutely needs to be sorted, though, is reliability, because if McLaren take a step forward and the likes of Aston Martin, for example, continue to improve, then seven mechanical DNFs could cost them massively in 2023. The biggest loss to the team, though, is surely Fernando Alonso, because whilst Pierre Gasly could be very good for them, that experience, speed and ability Alonso brings will be greatly missed. 
Nothing else to add on the drivers though, really, because honestly, I think they both did all they could and were let down by the team. And yes, I know, I keep banging on about reliability, but that was one of the big stories around Alpine this season. And for what feels like the millionth time in this video, they've got to get that sorted because it is going to be even closer in that midfield in 2023, hopefully at least. That is it then for this end of season waffle, but don't forget you can let me know how you think Alpine got on in 2022 in the comments section down below. Now, I will be back soon with some more content as always, but in the meantime, if you did enjoy this one, then please do leave a like as it really does help the channel out and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos or streams. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean, this has been the F1 Word and until next time, goodbye.